Let's go over the primitives tool in 3DC printing. I'm going to click on that button in the object section of the tool panel and you'll see a list of parametric primitives that are available at the top of the UI. And that includes freeform deformation primitives. Starting with the sphere, I'll hit the apply button. I want to make sure that I choose add rather than subtract, intersect, or split. So I'll hit apply. And in order to remove this preview object, all I need to do is step out into another tool. Now I can see the finished result. So I'll zoom in and I'll click on the primitives tool again. Let's choose the cube. This time I'm going to use the widgets on this gizmo to move it above. I'll scale it out using this global widget. I can scale it along an axis. I'll rotate about my model to make sure that it's going to cut evenly all the way across. And this time I'm going to choose subtract. When I hit apply, you'll notice that it cut away and it left this preview object intact so I can continue using it. But I'll undo. Now let's try split and hit apply. I'll step out temporarily and it did just as the name implies. It split the model into two distinct layers. Now let's try intersect. Let me make this a little bit more unique. Let's use something else. Maybe like the gear. I'll scale that out. Okay. Now this time let's choose intersect and hit apply. So yeah, you can make some really crazy shapes with this particular tool, as you'll see. All right, so I'm going to clear the object from this layer. And I go back to the primitives tool. And you'll notice in the tool options panel, you have a number of different options for things like the number of teeth, sharpness, gear depth, the inner radius, and so on. Okay, so let me scale the height down. Let's choose Add. Now hit Apply. Some objects are going to come out rough because they have hard edges and they don't have quite enough resolution. So I'm going to click my wireframe hotkey and you can see it's just too low resolution. So what I'll do is I'll click on this X icon to clear that object from the layer. Go back to the primitives tool. Now this time I want to add some resolution before I apply it. I'll increase the resolution and I'll hit apply. Step out and I'll turn wireframe off. It's still a little bit rough around the edges, but it has quite a bit more resolution than what it had. So let's choose Smooth All. I'm going to bring this object up. Okay, let's go back to the Primitives tool and let's choose something like this. Change the inner radius. And I'll hit apply and step out. You can see how that works. All right, so I'll create a new layer and go back to the primitives tool, the lathe tool. You can click to create points, right click to change the point type, and you can just cycle through them. There are three different types. 
B spline where it's a weighted point, a standard spline where it runs through the point, and then hard edge. All right, now I'm going to create an anchor point here so I can move this one. This will allow me to make it hollow. Right click to make that hard edge. Then we can save the curve, we can reload it at another point, and if we want we can change the type from cylinder to cube. Go back to cylinder. If I'm happy with that, I'll hit apply. Let's look at the text tool. Let's choose bend. This would work much better if our base object didn't have such a sharp angle. We can make it conform to the surface. And that's probably not a good example. I'm going to click Reset Axis, and that should fix it. We'll adjust the bend. Okay, and let's subtract. Hit apply. Undo that. I need to add some resolution here. Now hit apply. Much better. Okay. Back to the Primus tool. You have some really nice options for bolts with multiple threads you can hover over the profiles and choose which one you like you have bold heads you can change it up you can click use slit and choose among the different options there let's choose another primitive All right, so the next thing we want to look at is the click to place option. Let's go back to a bolt head. I can choose click to place, and what this will do is it allows me to use my brush radius to set the scale, and also the normals of the surface beneath the brush, it's going to use that if I check stroke direction. So now when I click, it automatically does all three, so it's a quick line tool. I can scale my brush a bit higher. Let's now look at the freeform deformation primitives. If I check transform lattice toggle, it gives me a standard transform gizmo to use for the entire object. Uncheck that, now we can use the cage points. We can choose from a few presets and we can have it work in symmetry. If I click a point on one side, you'll notice how it mirrors that action across the x-axis. Alright. Reset the primitive. You can also use models from the model's palette. In order to utilize those as freeform primitives, you can add to your collection by clicking on the new icon to locate an OBJ file on your hard drive. We can set an arbitrary number of control points. Let's say four, three, and three. Now we go to the e-panel and choose a selection marquee to make it easier to select multiple points. Oops. This is a good example to highlight the need to uncheck click to place when you're done using that particular feature. So now I'm just going to use my freeform lasso to drag select around a group of points and use the widgets on my gizmo 
to make localized edits. Reset the primitive. And that's going to conclude this quick overview of the primitives tool in 3DC printing. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.